Hey, so welcome back to the Capable Collective channel here. Um, today we're going to be talking about how to embed anything into your Squarespace website. So I've got a page set up and we've got some examples and I'm going to show you how to embed literally anything and everything on your website. So let's get started. I have set up this page here in, my, in the back end of my site and I've shown you the type of blocks here. So we've got embed blocks, code blocks, purpose-built blocks, which seems to be covered no matter what I click on, and integration blocks. So I'll show you how to use each of these. Um, there's a lot more of these types of integration blocks, but I'll give you a few examples and you'll get the gist on how they kind of work. So let's start with an embed block. The first thing is each of these has a distinct purpose as to how they're supposed to be used and what they're best for. Um, for example, I want to show you a couple of things. Let's start with this video. I was on a live a while ago on YouTube. So if I take this link to this post, make sure this is the correct one. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to go to the post from her and see if I can get that. Mm -mm -mm. Well, this will do. Okay. Uh, shared a video from the playlist marketing mix. There it is. There's the full video here. And I'm just going to pause that there. Okay, so here's the video. Now we could use a purpose built block. So Squarespace has in its arsenal, if you go to add, you can see there is a video block. This is a video. Maybe we can upload it that way. So you can go ahead and add, click add video and it says select from library or upload a file or add a link. To add a link, it has to be a YouTube link or a Vimeo link. So unfortunately this won't work for us unless we were to download the video and upload it, which might defeat the purpose of sharing all the comments and other bits like that that are really good. So the next thing we might try is to use an embed block. So you can see embed a link. Okay, so let's try that link. It says searching, searching, successfully located. Great, so let's hit save and see what happens. And it says, failed, essentially, enter a valid URL. So that doesn't work for this exact example. So what do we do? All right, let's give it a go another way. So what we're gonna do for this Facebook Live, and this works for Instagram posts, uh, reels, lots and lots of other things, is find the little settings here. Um, and actually, what I'm gonna do is, let's, Hit share, and then it says I can copy link, which we've already done, or you can share via all these other things, but embed, get that code. You can say if you want to start at a certain time or if you want to include the full post, including the caption or not, then copy that code. Then we're gonna try this with the code block instead. Now we're gonna copy and paste that in, and there we go. That is now embedded. Now obviously I would need to redesign this page a little bit to make sure it didn't overlap with other things, um, cause that's now possible in the new editor in Squarespace. So in Fluid Engine, things can now overlap. So that's that. So I'm going to hit save. And now you can see, like I said, these will all overlap. Now, if I were really designing this page, I would make sure that this was not possible, right? I would layer things or, and I don't know, this seems to be buggy cause I should be able to move this this code block, there we go, let's see. Ah, it's interesting to know. Okay, so it's taking up, there we go. Now I have, can be able to grab anywhere in it and know what's what. So I can resize this now, I think, no? Interesting, so see, you're learning all kinds of things. I'm learning all kinds of things about Fluid Engine. It is a whole new world. Okay, so that's how you can do, say, a Facebook post or an Instagram post. So let's try that with an Instagram post really quick. So here's a reel. And again, you might think, okay, I'm just going to grab the link and try and embed it. But for some reason, these embeds don't work super great for videos um, across social media. So it won't really work. I'll just tell you that right now. So what you can do is hit the three dots, click embed, and grab that code. And what we can do now is swap that code out. And you can see now it is sharing this Instagram post. If I hit save, 
the reel will be there and playable for anybody, which is pretty cool. And the caption and the likes and anybody the any comments, it's all there, which is nifty. The other thing, so that's how you can use the code block. Now let's try some other some other blocks. So I'm going to oops. So we've got, let's try a YouTube video. Let's try my last one. So I'm gonna grab here and I'm gonna get the shareable link. Now, this is, there we go. See, this one's more resizable than the um, YouTube or the Facebook one. So I can actually resize this and position it on the page where I want it, uh, which I couldn't really do with the Facebook one. I would have had to do that by changing the dimensions in the code. Um, now, so that's good to know. Lots of good options. So here we can use, obviously it's a YouTube video for, we can use the purpose built block so we can upload a YouTube video. It says incorrect link, HTTPS. There we go, video found. I just hit space there and it decided it liked me. So there we go, there's that video uploaded, but Let's see if we can do it this way. There we go, it works that way too. This is nice because, because I can embed it that way. I can also embed lots of other things. So you can embed audio. So let's say um, my podcast. Let's go ahead and sign in here and grab an episode link from my podcast. So here I can keep that video. Um, here I can upload an audio file or use a link. So that's my podcast, that's an audio. And you can title it and stuff here. So now people can play that here, right? So I can title it and say, I can decide if I want it to be classic or minimal looking. I can decide if I want it to be light or dark. Um, so if it's a podcast, it knows. So I can say podcast episode title. And it will show up there. Right? And people can play it. So that can play right there for them. The other thing I could do is add another block. Or just swap this one out. And it will locate that. And there we go. And it shows a nice, beautiful image for it. It's a really pretty player. And so that's what I've done across my entire podcast is in the blog, I've put that embed link and embedded my every episode into the podcast blog section, which I'll, I can show you after this. So that's a little bit about how and when to use all of these different things. If all else fails, if you can't use the embed block, if you can't use a purpose built block, like a video or an audio block, go for the code block. See if you can find code to embed it. You almost always can. Um, the other thing is you can, like I said, you can use these video blocks to upload videos directly. So you can actually upload a video from your computer. Now you only get so much hosting, see five and a half hours for free before you need to upgrade and pay for more video hosting. But there's times when that's a really good option. Like if you're using video, uh, YouTube, which is great because it's free, but they will automatically show related videos at the end. So if you're embedding a video, say on your homepage of your website, you might not want that. So you might want to embed, upload it so that nothing else shows after the video and to make that really nice. Um, you can also use Vimeo, which is a paid platform to avoid that issue as well. Um, or you can add a video and, um, as a file and upload that file through code. So that's, you can use the code block um, and Squarespace, as you probably know by now, you can add files um, as, through links and stuff. So for example, I can add a file here and then I can reference that file in my code. Um, all these files have a URL attached. That's a whole nother video, but just as a thing you can Google if you need to. Now that's how you do all of these types of videos here. But let's get to these integrations. Squarespace has some really fun integrations. So I'm gonna go ahead and just Remove this code really quick so we have a tidier. Okay, I'm just gonna delete some of these blocks so I can, we can get to where we were together here. 
Oh, it's such a whole thing with these new, the new system, isn't it? I can't just delete blocks and have my page rearranged for me. I have to actually manually move everything every single time. It's a lot of fun for me. And Okay, so let's go back here. And if I go to the top of this page and hit add block and scroll down, you can see where it says integrations here. And integrations, so these are where you can integrate with other services and they're kind of natural direct embeds for all these things that look really nice. They've been pre-designed by Squarespace. So you can do for Instagram or your Twitter feed or Zola or Amazon or SoundCloud, your Flickr account, all kinds of things. Uh, bands in town if you're a band. Um, so there's lots and lots of different ways that you can do this. And then you could even have an RSS feed block. So if there's an RSS feed out there that you love that you want to show on your website or reference somewhere, you can do it that way. So let's start with a few that I've already done. So I'm connected to Instagram here. So all you have to do is sign in to your Instagram account. So you hit add account. Okay, it will pop up. It'll ask you to sign in. You can see I'm already continue and accept all the terms. And you will have connection to your Instagram account. Now you can design this in lots of ways. This is a carousel. You can do a slideshow, you can do a grid. Um, you can play around with how that grid looks. So I can say maybe I only want three thumbnails for a row and I only want nine items to show, which makes it a really pretty three by three grid. Um, I can show this is stacked and they will be, you know, scrolling down forever and ever. Um, so there's lots of different options for this. And then you can do Twitter. I don't have Twitter, but it works much the same way. So you can add your account so by you click out account, you sign in, and then you can customize how you want it to show. If you want to show the avatar uh, next to your name or not, if you want to add a search section for people, um, to, if you want to include tweets marked as sensitive, show follow button, like there's all sorts of options for you here. So, and then, so that's just two there. You can also use, there's an Amazon one and you can search any Amazon product. So I started with my friend Virginia's book here. So it's called Childhood Unlimited. And I can add her book. I can add a buy button. I can encourage people. So if you have our products that you sell on Amazon, this is a really good way to integrate them into your website really naturally. Um, you can put them on your homepage, you can put them anywhere, and people can buy them directly. And look, that button there is already branded for me. They know. They've also got ones for, say, Flickr. Um, so if I were to go to my very, very old Flickr account from when I was traveling and such back, way back in the day, I could sign in. I could add account, and this is how this works for all of these. Sign in to my Flickr account. Oh. I might not be able to with you guys here because I don't have the password off the top of my head. But it's the same thing where it'd be very much like the Instagram one. I can choose how it displays. And um, this is, you can see it's top aligned. I can center align it and I can change lots of things in here about it. So I can doesn't change the design much, almost exactly like the Instagram one. And so that's how all of these work. You can sign into your band's, account, band's in town account. You can sign into your SoundCloud account and allow for people to experience your stuff. Or you can add your SoundCloud URL. So if there's something on SoundCloud that I really like and wanted to reference in, in say, my blog post or something, I could do that. So let's just go with this first thing, baddest of them all. I can reference that song right here. There we go, it's embedded. Or I could even embed, say, this is Eliza Rose. I can embed her full player and all of her songs and stretch this out so it shows a good number of things on in her thing. And you can do that here, so let's go back up. I could do the same thing here with the embed block. It does the same exact thing. So there's lots of ways to do this. I could grab here it says share and i'm going to say there is going to be probably some code here there we go embed i can copy this i can brand it i can change the colors of this and embed it directly so i can copy and paste that and embed it in the code block so 
So I can put that here and have it in again. So there's lots and lots and lots of ways to embed. Um, it's just gonna be a matter of, they all have slightly different features and quirks. So it's a matter of finding which system is gonna work best for you and which thing. So you can see we've embedded this in three different ways through their um, the integration, through code, and just through the regular embed. So my go-to when you're starting with embedding is to start with the embed block or the purpose-built blocks. And then if nothing else works, use the code. It's always a great option. All right, I hope this helps.